Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this episode I'm starting a month-long versus series. It's Tau versus Imperial Guard, and it's going to be Kit versus Kit, Army versus Army. And I'm going to kick things off with Tau Start Collecting. So I know I've said it before, but it definitely bears repeating that I don't buy all of the kits that I feature on Grey Primer. I actually build a lot of kits for friends and family. They send the kits to me, I get to unbox them and build them for the channel. Then when they're all built and primed, I send them back. And it's great, I get to do the best part, in my opinion, which is building them. And they get fully built, fully primed kits that they can then just paint and start to play with. It's a perfect relationship. And very recently I got sent a whole batch of Tau and Imperial Guard kits. I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to just pit them against each other. I'll still look at each kit in isolation. I'll still unbox it, I'll build it, I'll review it just as normal. I'll do a Tau episode on the Friday, then a Guard episode on the Saturday. And then for the very last episode in the month, I'll look at the kits in total and see how well they stack against each other and see how well received the videos have been on YouTube and how well the images of them have been received on Instagram. So there's a lot to look at with these. And in the end, it's just a bit of fun. It's just my personal opinion. So we'll see how we get on through the month. But no point in holding this off any longer. I have a lot of miniatures to build. I've got like a bunch of different Star Collect sets I've got battle forces to build there's gonna be a whole bunch of drones there's gonna be an awful lot of normal troopers but there are also gonna be some serious tanks and some very cool mechs as well so let's get into this Tau start collecting coming up right now the one thing I think that concerns me that might drive me a bit mad at the amount of drones there are gonna be a lot of drones this month and I got this ethereal on the hover drone Ugh, more drones all of these fire warriors. I think they're looking pretty good though. I love these mechs. I think these look fantastic. And I'm very excited to get those built. What are they actually called? They're called XV8 Crisis Battle Sets. Okay, good to see the tray here. Oh my word though. Look at all this. That is daunting. Uh, maybe not so much. I think it's just... It just seemed like such a grid of stuff, especially there. Um, this will probably go together quite easily. And then it looks like we've got some drone bits and pieces. Maybe that crisis battle suit. Maybe that's some weapons or something from there. I'm liking the look of these ball and sockets. That might mean we've got some options for posability. And it might also point towards me being able to get some magnets in there. But we'll see. Looks like more of those drone tops there. And then something really cool I've noticed on these armor pieces. You see the Tau symbol? That's repeated in these ones as well. Love that little touch. And I do like the look of Tau weapons. And thematically, they're just so different from the likes of orcs, which I have spent a lot of time looking at this year. So this is, this is a refreshing change. Um, although I still have a a big space in my heart for orcs. Look like 50 mil bases, the uh, 40 mil there, some flying stands as well, a whole bunch of flying stands, I wonder if that for all the drones, and then this looks like the ethereal. Lots of very uh, fine connection points I've noticed here, so slightly nervous about that, you can see another one there in the hand but I imagine it'll be okay. My clippers are pretty sharp, so I don't think I'm gonna have a problem. Let's just have a quick look at these instruction manuals. Oh, we've got a decal sheet here as well. So that's great. This is the instruction for the ethereal. Let's see, you can see how they go together on the back. These would normally be sold in single blister packs. So that's why the instruction is just this slightly unusual looking one sheet. I'll quickly look at the XV8 crisis battle suit instruction possible variant builds there i'm not sure um quite a thick manual to be honest there seems to be quite a lot in this but oh there, there's quite a lot of multilingual data sheets at the back there too so that accounts for a bit of the the bulk now it looks like there are two options on building the fire warriors you can build them either as a strike team or as this breacher team so that's kind of cool i didn't know that 
And this is a much more up-to-date, full-color instruction manual. You can see the glue points marked in yellow and really nicely detailed instruction there on how to kit out each of the warriors. And even a little bit of art at the back there. That's a nice touch. Okay, let's go get them all built up and I'll be right back. And here they are, the fully built up Tau Start Collecting set. And I know I have a long way to go with Tau this month, so I'm going to be seeing a lot of these drones, a lot of like fire warriors and stuff. So maybe I'm still in that honeymoon period for now with this army. And uh, maybe when I'm a few weeks into building Tau, I'll be just completely done with fire warriors and drones. I think I'm done with drones. Let's put that out there straight away. But I'm definitely not done with Fire Warriors. These were very cool to put together. And there are actually quite a few options for how you pose them. Which was a surprise to me. So first of all, let's have a look at this uh, ethereal on the hover drone. An interesting miniature to look at. I love the way they've attached it to the base there with this piece of parchment or something. Rolled up parchment. Detail wise, it's, it's pretty good. The expression on the face is fairly uh, impassive but there are nice details around the body and stuff there the flow of these robes and stuff to give it a sense that they are just being caught by the wind and yeah pretty nice so this is the little ds8 tactical support turret i love this little guy i just i love his little chunky feet on the ground here he just looks like a little um trash can you would see but one with absolutely lethality this pop-up um missile pod here i don't know there's just something about it there's not much to it but there's something about it that i really like i like the uh, drone details just peeking through this little gap and it's just a really nice miniature if i end up buying a few of these i'll probably hollow out some of these missiles here to make it seem like that actual tube has been expanded to give it a more of a realistic feel in a battlefield setting and I guess when you're painting it, you could do scorch damage on the back here. Or maybe even a waft of smoke coming up from the back with a little bit of, um, I don't know, cotton wool or something to give it that impression. That could be kind of cool looking. Going to skip the Fire Warriors for a second here and just look at a few of these drones. And I do like these ones with the, the twin pulse carbines, I think these are, um, hanging underneath. Lots of little details there to pick out with, yeah, I suppose you could put a little lighting effects and sort of shine effects on them. And it's got these two antenna which come up the back and then it's the little, um, I guess, shield generator portion here. But uh, they're pretty cool. And you have another two options for these. You can build them as, this is the shield variant. And you can see the different construction of it there with the two sort of sections. Um, no weapon systems on that one. And then the final one is the marker drone, which is this guy here. I think it does have a weapon on one side and then this marker unit. Um, for improving the accuracy of your troops in a battle. But that's the drones. They're, they're, they're not that interesting. And I suppose where their value comes is on their actual usage in the battlefield. So let's have a look at something that's a lot less bland. Now let's have a look at these fire warriors. And as you can see straight away here, there's a lot of character here. There's a lot of personality in this. I did try to defer to the non-helmeted heads as much as possible because I do think that you can get a lot more of a feel for the, the person behind the, the armor there. Uh, and you have this pistol at the side as well, which is a pulse pistol. So you got this short range pulse pistol here, and then a longer range pulse rifle. Pretty interesting to look at. And here we have a completely different look to them. This one's got the helmet on, he's in a kneeling position, got the pulse carbine um pistol at the side as well there armor on the different shoulder and there's character there there's definitely personality in these which surprises me because i didn't think i was going to have as much fun putting these together another one here with a pulse rifle the longer pulse rifle and yeah something about them just works for me this one is helmeted got the pulse carbine and i like the fingers curled underneath here supporting the rifle the whole thing just looks pretty cool. Here's another one in the same firing position as before, but a slight tilt on the head just adds that tiny bit of personality and character. And then the chasse ui, it feels like a very natural pose. Someone walking along, supporting their rifle, checking out their, their data device. You know, it could be GPS or tracker or something. And I really like the look of that one. 
and then the final far war here in the kneeling position but i went for a much higher target that he's uh keeping an eye on this felt like joe pineapples from 2000 ad to me this this kind of firing pose and the length of this rifle but uh really really cool nice expression on the face there as well got a battle cry going as he's picking off some target savage and then we're into the XV-8 Crisis Battle Suits. And on the box, they're relatively static looking. Perhaps not the most inspirational looking image on the front. But what I found actually when I went to build them were a lot of options for the way the arms are, the way the uh, the waist is, the, the head and everything, the, the types of weapons you can put onto them. There's a lot of choice here. And I was able to make three very different battle suits. So I'm going to have a look at the first one. And this first one I equipped with twin flamers. And I kind of like the idea of this guy just like creating this wall of fire out the front that he's just absolutely just blazing forward. Um, this could be such a cool paint job if you got that kind of cotton wool effect of the flames coming out of this. It could look absolutely savage. Missile pod on the shoulder there some beautiful details throughout on the armor plates and the legs lots of uh, detail around the feet and everything and you see how those go together really really interesting look at minis next up i went with twin burst cannons and this dude and he's in a totally different much more dynamic pose and i love that you have the option to do something like this sort of catching him freeze frame in the middle of a fight where he's off balance trying to lay down some fire over this way um, you can see i have drilled my barrels there so i didn't didn't miss out on that one and you'll notice there are four to drill out in each of these guns so probably not the best choice if uh, you don't like drilling your barrels but again another great model totally different pose and then this last one is another one with a completely different pose much more of a, a hero kind of pose this one i went with the twin fusion blasters on either side here uh i'm not sure rules wise points wise what the the burden of that would be the cost of that would be was i built these completely from the rule of cool i think this is a marker unit here so i think when you're equipped with this you do have the added bonus of um superior accuracy whereas the other two i put missile pods on i think that's what that is i need to check the codex to make sure but that's that's them all in terms of the score because we're doing tau versus guard this month i wanted to give these a score at 100 as a standalone kit and then when i do the guard kit tomorrow i can compare sort of how this scores against how that scores and that's how we'll work it out through the whole month so as a standalone what do i think well where this loses some points for me are in these drones the drones are just they're so bland there are probably better ways that these could be sculpted to make them more interesting to look at to give you a little bit more flexibility in their construction and i imagine if you're painting a whole bunch of those you would very quickly go mad the ethereal loses a few points for me because it's just not grabbing me so all that said the xv8 battle suits are super cool love this little turret at the front here he's really neat and then the fire warriors are really interesting to look at they were cool to build there's lots of flexibility there in how you put them together and they, they're full of character as well which is not something i thought i was going to be saying about them so out of 100 i guess this sort of sits around a 75 for me it's just let down by those drones the ethereal and then you're sort of just leaning into the fire warriors and the xv8 crisis battle suits so 75 is not a bad score but it sets the baseline for the month and it'll be interesting to see how the astra militarum how the guard do tomorrow with their standard start collecting set until then if you're enjoying the content please like share and subscribe thanks for joining me and i'll see you soon bye bye